And we know Brock Besser has been the big story of the season so far, and we expect to see more development from him throughout the end of the year. And that race for the Calder will engage fans and, of course, the media along the way. But as you look at this team and how they are actually going to play the games, how those other pieces are going to develop as a team and as, a, as a, an entity that's going to show some progress, how do you see the rest of the season playing out, in particular up until the trade deadline? Well, I think, you know, once they get Horvat and Berchi back, and that gives them their first line, then I think you're going to see, the, like, the structure of what it's going to be. So they're going to be the first line. They're going to be the uh, Occupy, the other team's top line in a head-to-head -head matchup. Now you've got the Sedins in a supporting role, you know, playing 13, 14, 15 minutes, but in a favorable matchup where they will be able to provide offense. You've got Thomas Vanek as a bit of a wild card providing offense. So, again, it's kind of getting back to where they were in mid November going forward and then underneath that is this other layer of development that's taking place. Some of it with the Canucks. Besser's obviously found money for this franchise. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. I mean, if we were to talk about him at the start of the year with 15 goals, that'd be a great rookie year. He's at 19 already and he's threatening to score 40 this year, which is mind-blowing. Vertanen has made some nice strides. They've still got stature. They've got other bodies and then they've got this they, they've got their draft picks from the last two years take, uh, developing it in other places. So, you know, some good news, but I, I, I think the fact that they can see the best news at the NHL level right now is a massive boon to this organization. What does look like a massive boon as well, and we know fans wanted this team to tank and get a high draft yeah. pick, that still may be on the mm. table. But you mentioned Vanek. We've got good Branson. There are pieces to play yes. at the trade deadline. You've got a guy like Jonathan Dolan out there. You've got Pedersen, as you talked about. You've got you Levy. You know, there are a lot of young pieces, and then you add in next year's draft free agency, this team could look vastly different when they open the season next year. Yeah, I still think 2020 is kind of the year where you're going to see it come together, and, and, and it's a little hard to predict where this organization is going, because over the years we've seen them, just when you think, okay, this is the direction they're going, yes, I can see it all happening, they make, you know, they sign three guys like Del Zotto and Burmistroff and Sam Gagne in an effort to make them competitive right away. So, I, you know, I, I think, you know, they, they are leaning toward the future. That is their priority. Whether they make that full-scale commitment or not, That that I think that's the big question. Well, you know, I just hope that when we get to the end of 2018 and we're doing this video again next year, that we are still here for one thing. <laughs> but, you know, will Jim Benning, Trevor Linden, yeah. will they still be there as well? That's the big thing hanging over this franchise. Yeah, I, I don't think it's Trevor Linden unless he leaves on his own volition. I, I, I think it's, you know, whether they commit to J Jim Benning going forward and the plan. I, I know Canucks fans don't want to hear it, but when you look at a list of their prospects, when their 10th best prospect is Will Lockwood, who's on the American Junior Team at the World Junior Championship, that that's pretty good. So, like, help is coming. It is going to arrive here. Better days are ahead, and just keep telling yourself that because it'll make the next three months a lot easier to get through. Yeah, but you did hear it here first. Canucks win the Stanley Cup in 2020, <laughs> according to Ed Willis.